we need comprehensive immigration reform is the bottom line of this. To be blunt, we have a dumb system. And we should just stand up and acknowledge that and say, let's put something better in place. And what can you do at the state level? Because again, this is largely a federal issue. But you can take action at every level to make us more successful. So just two or three things I'd mention that I'm proud of that we're doing in the state of Michigan. First of all, it's the whole attitude about the issue of immigrants. So by executive order I announced last week in the state of the state, we're going to create the Office for New Americans to create an office that's going to be a clearinghouse to send the message, not only in terms of programs and policies, but let's open our arms and say you're welcome to come to our state. We want you here because we think you add tremendous value. The second thing is, it gets to this point about immigrants have a tremendous track record of being entrepreneurs. In high-tech field, it's legendary in terms of the companies they've created. But it's also true in creating many, many different kinds of companies. I gave one illustration to our citizens in our state of three names that if you're a Michigander, you know these names because there are companies that are household words. Dow, Meyer, Masco. Now, not all of you may know those companies because you're not from Michigan, but if you're in Michigan, they all ring a bell and you say, these are Michigan companies. Every single one of those companies was created by an immigrant. So we're looking to do a statewide EB-5 center to say, let's do this on a state scale, not just the community scale, but a scale that can be more successful at the state level. The third initiative I'm very excited about that we just announced yesterday in Detroit, and I was proud to do it with the mayor of Detroit and three members of the city council, was to say, here's an opportunity to have a city that is already coming back in spite of the bankruptcy, but here's a way to turbocharge that, to really watch the economic recovery of Detroit happen faster and better. And that's a request to the federal government to say, let's have 50,000 visas over five years for highly skilled immigrants. Let's bring them to Detroit to live and work for a five-year period to turbocharge the economy. It's an outstanding opportunity. We have the base of it already in our state. We have nearly 1,800 advanced degree graduates in STEM right in the state of Michigan alone. And in terms of what it would draw and attract in terms of engineering talent, information technology, life sciences, health care, what an outstanding opportunity. So literally, I want to take the administration at their words to say they want to help any way they can in Detroit short of the budgetary constraints. This doesn't require budget dollars. Here's a way to turbocharge the economy. Let's go. Now let's come back to the overall topic, though, of immigration reform. And when you step and look at it, why hasn't this happened? Well, one, I think one of the key reasons is, in my view, we have a broken political culture in our country. It's too much about fighting. It's about too much divisiveness. And we need to overcome that. The analogy I talk to our citizens about when I talk about issues in our state is I said, let's take it out of politics. Let's take it out of this broken world and pretend like we're one big family. And I give the analogy of saying, let's pretend we're sitting at the kitchen table. And I'm saying with my 10 million fellow Michiganders, I do this on the budget all the time. Because when you put a question in that context, it's an easy question. And usually common sense can get you an answer pretty quickly. But the same thing should be true of immigration. If you had the opportunity to join your family of someone that was brilliant, really smart, really interesting, not only in terms of saying they could bring resources, economic resources, but they could add diversity, new ideas, new thoughts to your family, wouldn't you figure out how to have them join you? You'd say, you're welcome. Here's a seat at our table. You might find the kids or someone arguing about which seat they get at the table, but you'd get them at the table. That's the kind of thought process we need here. So let's not let politics be the barrier. The other subset that goes with that, in my view, is the fact that too often in this particular case, people are looking at the details too much. They're at the micro level of saying, how big's the wall? How big's the fence? What does the visa look like? What are the programs looking like? And we need to step back from those questions and get back to the fundamental point that really matters is the why. I said it already when I gave you the family analogy. Why do we want these wonderful people in our country? What made our country great to begin with? Immigration. 
That's where all those talented people came from. That's where we came from. By welcoming people to our country because they brought economic skill sets and that energy level. They also brought a quality of life in terms of diversity, culture, that don't we brag about that every day? So why would we build the dumb system that we have today to say, we don't want you here? That makes no sense. So let's step back and ask that fundamental question. Let's put it in that context. And I want to give you one specific illustration, going back to the illustration I talked about, the 50,000 visas for Detroit. I describe it as the dumbest of the dumb when you talk about immigration issues. I'm talking about bringing highly skilled individuals with advanced degrees in STEM to Detroit. What's our current policy? Our current policy says, hey, come get your education. We'll give you an educational visa to come to our world-class institutions. And we have multiple ones in Michigan. In fact, I mentioned there are nearly 2,000 of those graduating every year. So come, we'll give you the world-class education, and the day you get done, we're going to tell you to get out. Isn't that contrary to the most basic elements of common sense? After giving them that world-class education, after getting them excited to say they love living in some community in our state, we tell them to get out? Why don't we turn that question around and say, why don't you stay? And then we need to reinforce the question that quite often gets asked more than any other, that if you answer this question, you can make something happen. And that's the fear of people, of Americans saying, if you give that job to that immigrant, you're going to cost an American a job. Every piece of data says that's not right at that level. In fact, the data says you create two and a half jobs for Americans for every job that that immigrant takes. Now, common sense once again would say, shouldn't we actually encourage even more immigrants than 50,000? So I encourage you to get excited to really look at this pilot program I'm talking about for Detroit. Because while we're working on comprehensive immigration, let's not stall things, let's not delay things, let's just do it and prove it and show to the rest of the world that the United States, that Michigan, Detroit, can show that by welcoming immigrants, you can be a net generator of jobs. You can create a winning environment for those new people coming to our country, for the people in the neighborhoods of Detroit, and for our entire country. So thank you.